Okie doke. In this video, we're talking about the connections between our function graph and our uh, first derivative and second derivative. Okay, so this is the graph of a f prime, right? This is an f prime graph. So this is the graph of a derivative, okay, which are the slopes of your f. It's important to understand what graph they are giving you. So what information are they telling you about, um, about the graph of f? So we're going to look at our f prime graph and make some inferences about the graph of f. Okay? So we can look and say, when is the graph of f decreasing? Okay, so if the graph of f is decreasing, that means that your derivative is going to be negative. Okay, that's the connection between f prime and f when it comes to increasing or decreasing. So let's see, what is the decreasing interval? So where is our function negative? Right, so here it's negative down here, which means our interval is on the x-axis. So to the left of negative 2, and then between 1 and 3. So we have two intervals of decreasing are two intervals of decreasing. When your derivative is negative, your function is decreasing. Okay, but down here, when your derivative is positive, right, so when is the function increasing? That's when your derivative is positive or above your x-axis. So we will write down these two intervals for when your function is increasing and your derivative is positive. Okay, our next one says, when does it have a relative minimum? So our f will have a relative minimum when our function changes from decreasing to increasing. Okay, so we are looking for the place where our function changes from a negative to a positive. Okay, and that looks like it happens right here, right? So here we have, this is an interval where our graph is negative, and then this is the interval where our graph is positive. So whenever we change from a negative to a positive, right, your function goes from decreasing to increasing. And that would give you a minimum value. So it looks like we're also gonna have one here at negative two because the function also changes from decreasing to increasing. Okay, our next connection is about being a positive, a relative max. Okay, so it has a relative maximum when f prime changes from positive to negative. Okay, and that happens here at positive one. That's where our graph changes from above the x-axis to below the x-axis. Remember, this is a graph of f prime. So when f prime changes from positive to negative, your function is going to have a relative maximum value. Okay, so our up Right, our graph are increasing and then your graph is decreasing, so we have positive slopes changing to negative slopes. Okay, number five is asking about concavity. So remember the concavity is your second derivative, which is the derivative of f prime. Okay, so we're going to look and see when is our f prime graph increasing. Right, because if our f prime graph is increasing, that means its slope is going to be positive. So it looks like it's increasing from negative infinity to negative 1, and then again increasing from positive 2 onto infinity. Okay, which means that on those intervals, that's where our graph is going to be concave up. So I believe, what did I say that was? From negative infinity to negative 1 and then connecting with positive two to infinity. Because f prime is increasing on those intervals. Okay, the y values from your f prime graph are increasing on the intervals from negative infinity to negative one, and then they're once again increasing after positive two. Okay, which means that our second derivative is positive and when your second derivative is positive, your graph of f is concave up. Okay, so let's see if we can do that same one for the concave down without having to look at it. Okay, so we know that concave down means the second derivative is less than zero. Okay, and if the second derivative is less than zero, your f 
prime or your function is decreasing. And I believe that happens in the middle, so from negative one to two would be the interval where that is happening. Okay, so concave down, F being concave down, happens when our second derivative is negative, and your second derivative is negative where your first derivative graph is decreasing. Okay, so all these connections between F and F prime and F double prime. Okay, and then f of x has a point of inflection at some point because f double prime is this, which means that f double prime, well, f prime. Okay, so we know it has a point of inflection when f double prime is zero or when f double prime is undefined, okay, which this is a continuous function, so there's not going to be a place where it's undefined. Okay, so let's looking at the place where f double prime is zero. Okay, so if f double prime is zero, that means we have a change from positive to negative, or from negative to positive, right? That would be a relative max or a relative min. So let's see, if we're looking at our graph, where does it change from increasing to decreasing? Okay, so this blue line here is the graph of your second derivative, okay, which is the graph of the slopes of your first derivative, and we notice that it crosses the x-axis at negative one and positive two. Okay, this is where our graph of f double prime changes from positive to negative. So that's where we're gonna have a point of inflection on your f. Okay, at x equals negative one and at x equals two because f prime changes signs, right? It changes signs, either changes from positive to negative or changes from negative to positive. Yeah, both of those places, that means we're going to have a point of inflection, and your F graph is changing from concave up to concave down, or vice versa. And since it doesn't ask for that, we're just going to say that these are the two points where it has a point of inflection. So let's look at what else we can, what conclusions can we make about F double prime? Okay, F double prime changes from positive to negative. I guess we'll say positive to negative from plus to minus at x equals negative one because f double prime has a, right, this looks like it would be a relative max. So the next one is f double prime changes from negative to positive. Let's try negative to positive at x equals positive two because f prime of x has a relative minimum value. Okay, so everything that we could say about f from f prime applies to f double prime from f. So f double prime is less than zero. Um, I think we already had that interval from negative one to positive two, right? That's the interval here. Your second derivative is negative on the interval because f prime is decreasing. Okay, that's when our derivatives are negative, when your graph is decreasing. That means our graph must be increasing on these other intervals, from negative infinity to negative one, and then again from two to infinity, because the graph is increasing on those intervals. Okay, so we have positive values and negative values, and that talks about the concavity. Okay, so when f of x is negative, your graph is gonna be concave down, right? The graph of f will be concave down, and when f double prime is positive, the graph will be concave up. And it's at those points of inflection that it changes from concave up to concave down. Okay, so these are some connections that you should make between f, f prime, and f double prime. Okay, so you need to be very careful of the graph that they are showing you. Okay, this is an F prime graph, not an F graph. Okay, hopefully that helps your brain.